Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pamela Msoni and as we relocated from Zimbabwe to Ireland a few years ago and I've been sharing my sharing my sorry sharing my relocation journey ever since. I've been AMIA for a minute. I gave you a life update um, telling you what was going on and you guys requested that I share my pregnancy journey. So before we go any further, uh, I just want to say thank you to all those who commented on the previous vlog on what they wanted me to talk about. So most of you wanted me to share the journey, that's why I've come back. So I decided to just do it while I'm still motivated. Um, yeah, so it's very, very, very motivational of you when you comment and you share what you think of what I've posted or what you want to see in the future. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to ask that those who are watching and haven't subscribed, please, 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 please subscribe to my channel. Please like, please share. Please look at, watch the previous videos as well if you haven't. I'm on the road to 2K subbies, so I just want to get to 2000 before the new year. So please help a sister out. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to share my pregnancy journey, how I found out, how it went, and how I'm feeling now. Uh, yeah, basically, um, I found out on the 31st of December last year that I was going to have a baby. Uh, I can't say I was actively trying for a child. I knew it was a possibility, but at the same time, I wasn't expecting it. Uh, and you know December, guys, if you know December, you are in that mood where it's just parties and parties. I remember I went to Queen Loziba's party. I came back, we had our work party, and then I was working the last weekend, it was 30, 31st. Um, that's when I just realized that my period wasn't coming, and I was like, okay, let me do a test. And I was at work, I went on my tea break, and I was just like, let me just do this. And then the test came out positive. First person I sent was my sister, uh, Vicky. And she, she had been praying and preaching to me about having another child. My son is, my firstborn is eight now. So she was so happy. Then I sent it to my husband. Obviously, he had no complaints. He was happy as well. So then I think I was just numb. I think two days later when I was off, we went and bought, you know, the clear blue t t t pregnancy test. We went and got that one. That one shows like how many weeks you are. And it, then it just said plus, I don't remember if it said plus two weeks or plus three weeks. I think it said plus three weeks. So I knew uh, there's no going back. But at the same time, I was so numb. Like, I, I, I didn't know what to feel. I was just like, after all these years, I was just numb. So then, yeah, ba then I started to realize that actually the whole of December, I was sleeping so much. I would come home from a shift and I would just be out of it. I would just, like, if I'm off, I would sleep half of the day. It's like, when you when I was not looking back, that's when I realized, okay, I I had some symptoms. I didn't have any nausea or anything like that uh but the sleeping the exhaustion eating I, I i i was eating sadza like i don't know i'm not really i was not a sadza fan before my pregnancy but that month i was like eating it like a lot so yeah that's that's the initial like feeling my first trimester was fine it was quiet i was just sleeping I didn't even say to anyone at work. This side, people share these things easily. Back home, you know, our beliefs we were like, we don't say it until people can see it. So I didn't say anything until I was supposed to go into work one morning. And then I woke up to go take a shower and I noticed that it had a bleed. It was a small bleed, but I wasn't sure if, I, if it was going to continue. So I panicked. I rang into work and I told them, no, I can't come in. I'm not well. I'm going to go in. I'm going to come in, but I'm going to come in to be seen. So I went to the emergency department. I was sent up to the maternity ward. A scan was done. Everything was fine. I think that's the moment where I really realized, okay, I'm pregnant. I'm going to be a mom. And you know, when you see your baby on that scan, that feeling, I don't know. It just, nothing beats that feeling. So I think at that point, that's when it really, really hit home. That, yeah, we're going to have a second child. So anyway... Uh, that was towards the end of my first trimester and at that time I had registered with the GP the GP had referred me to the hospital where I was going to deliver which is where I work which was a plus for me so yeah so GP so I'm going to also just go through the process of having a child in Ireland while I tell you about my journey the first thing you register with your GP your GP will do bloods on you and then your GP will refer you to the hospital where you are going to be uh, where you're going to have your baby. So what happens basically is there's shared care between the GP and the hospital. You're, at the hospital, you're seen by a obstetrician or a gynae, like as we call it back home. 
um, and then in between you're seen by your GP. So with me, my GP did my bloods and I came back with a very low iron level. I was anemic. So he started me on iron supplements, which was fine. Um, yeah, the problem is I'm not very compliant with taking medication, but I tried. And then uh, I went on with that. Then I started being seen at the hospital as well. Everything was fine. I, I never had a bleed again throughout my pregnancy, but there was always that fear that, oh my God, what if I lose this child? You know, it's, you know that, f I think if you've had a, a mis like I've never had a miscarriage, but I think for someone who's had a miscarriage or you've carried a pregnancy, there's always that fear that, what if I don't carry my my baby to term? So anyway, we went on to the second trimester, we're doing the scans, everything was fine. What I can say is different is this side, you do more scans than you would do back home i think back home you basically just do the 20 week scan to tell the sex and maybe if there's a problem they'll do a scan but this side every time you went i went into the hospital they did a scan fine it won't be as detailed as the one they do to check the sex and to check how the baby is developing but every time you go into the hospital which is maybe every four weeks or every two weeks depending on if you are a special case you might go more often if there is no red flags with you or anything that is worried about then you won't go as often but every time you go in they will do a scan just to check the baby's heartbeat which i find so reassuring that when you you know you're just staying at home and i, I don't even know how under like the people who are underprivileged in the rural areas get to a point where they just have a child they don't know the sex it's so reassuring as an expecting mother to have that scan and to hear your baby's heartbeat. And I wish and hope that one day our own country will get to that point where those services are easily available to anyone. Anyway, uh, yeah, so like I was saying, it's shared care between the hospital where you're going to have the baby and the GP. And maternal care is free here. Infant care is free here. So you don't pay for anything. And for me, with my first child, I had... Um, I had him at Mata Day, which is a private hospital. So I find that the general or the government care here was the same standard as the care that I got at Mata Day. And on top of that, it's free. So that's one of the advantages that you have here. And they really take care of you. This side, people know their rights. This side, people know how to complain. If something goes wrong, they you are free. the people are not hesitant to sue or to like report that. I feel like I was I wasn't treated well. I was mistreated or I'm fairly treated so they really really treat you well i i don't want to lie there's no way where i felt beat at the gp beat at the hospital where i felt like i wasn't treated being treated right or anything like that i think even when i went into the hospital because i work in a totally different department i didn't even mention that i was working in the hospital until i went to deliver Yes, they eventually knew because of the charts, maybe the few nurses there, but it's not something I said earlier on. But still, they st would still take care of you. If you went there for an appointment and they realized you had been sitting for a while, they'll be asking, even if they're not the ones taking care of you, just passing in the corridor, they will be asking you, have you been served? Are you okay? And that's, like, I find very good care. Anyway, besides the shared care, then you, I went on to my second trimester, um, I think that's when I had the scan to check the sex of the baby. That was fine. I was happy with the outcome. I'm not going to share. And maybe if you get me to 2,000 subscribers, I'll tell you the sex of my child. Anyway, um, yeah, so second trimester was fine as well. But second, when I was going into second trimester, we traveled back home. That's where you were seeing all that content. If you go and see my outfits, there were all those kind of outfits where I was just covering. Luckily, my tummy had not gotten that big yet i think i was four or five months at that time yeah i think i was almost five months um yeah but then i managed to conceal it because i didn't hear any comments about it on my videos when i posted and yeah so second trimester was fine we traveled home and that was an emergency not an emergency but we decided to go then because the plan initially was to go august when on the summer holidays when our sun is closed but then now we couldn't because our, our, it, you know the baby would be here or be coming so we had to make a plan and we decided okay let's go uh and join like take time off and join it with the easter holiday because our son gets two weeks off then and then we took him out of school for a week and then there's also an issue where this side if the children miss school for a certain number of days i'm not sure if it's 25 days 21 days um 
they report you like maybe to the social workers or whatever to look into it it's just a protocol that they do but if you do explain to them why the child isn't coming to school then they understand so we explained to them that no we haven't been home we want to visit family and and that was fine and that was just a week out of school so there were no there was no issues with that so we went to zim we came back there was no problem but i unfortunately i really didn't enjoy the trip home because i couldn't do all the things that i usually do i, I think if you notice on my vlogs i kept saying oh my, my mocktail my mocktail i would have loved something with some rum or some something stronger but anyway I couldn't I just had to have the mocktails that's why it kept me if if you really watched I kept referring to my drinks oh I had my mocktail my mocktail my mocktail anyway yeah so that was second trimester um, uh, then went into third trimester so at this point I didn't do any preparation until I think baby was seven months or so and one thing about people this side they're so good to give you stuff I don't know maybe it's the community or the place where you stay I stay in a village or in the country a bit out from the town so we're a very small community everyone knows everyone so the few people who knew I was expecting were coming in with bits and bobs okay here's a, a, a buggy a prem or here's a car seat or I'm going to give you this or I'm going to give you this and then we've got a group as well of the ladies in the area where I stay where if you don't have use for something you just put it up someone can take it people would put up new things like uh, those baby changers where you can change your baby or stock your baby's pampas like so many things you can get them from the group from groups like that so i got some of my stuff from those kind of groups and some other things from my friends and other ladies in the village which was like a lifesaver because i saved a lot of money from that i think i only bought one buggy i got another buggy which is a pram for free so my child has two buggies and two cars it's one for the other car the dad's car one for my car which i got for free so imagine if i was buying that how much would, have, would that have cost me so yeah then like i said i didn't buy any preparation until seven months i bought a few things as be our belief that you don't buy things until maybe your third trimester so i bought a few things from seven months and then i was just buying bit by bit i think i started really buying when the baby had come then yeah let me i'd taken notes let me see if i've missed out on anything now in my third trimester got sick went out sick and then went on to my maternity leave and then now my maternity leave has started the baby is not coming you guys i had the same 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 issue with my first son and i just wasn't patient enough so i went in and eventually i was booked in for an induction the night that i was the yeah the night before uh, the day I was supposed to go for my induction, I was having contractions, I think the whole night till 4 a.m. Then I think I only slept for an hour, two hours, and we were waking up going to the hospital. We got there, um, I was induced, they put in that little gel thing that they put in, like there's three ways of inducing. So they start with the least uh, effective and then they keep progressing. So the first thing that they gave me, I think I was already in labor, but I just didn't know it there's someone else who was in there also who had been induced with that the day before and it didn't work and she was now i think had been given the second or third thing that they give and within 30 minutes the pains had started really it was now yeah it was now something else but like i was saying me worrying about giving birth in english crying in english fortunately enough there was a Ghanaian um midwife she saw me when she took care of me when I arrived in the morning and she knocked off to go home uh, from night duty. And then during the day, I kind of progressed, my labor progressed and I was in pains and my water broke and the whole process. And then she came in to a night shift to come in. Like well, as soon as she came in, she was like, I was her patient and she delivered me. I think within two hours of starting a shift, she delivered the, our baby. So I'm grateful that she was an African nurse. I wasn't really afraid, but at that point, guys you don't even care whether it's an african nurse or an irish nurse or a whatever nurse because at the, all you want to do at that point is just get it over and done with so i had her and she was with another irish nurse and they were both so lovely there is really nothing to be afraid of the care is phenomenal guys that was my only worry that how am i going to interact or gel with them like how am i going to get through the labor they were actually so good and with this one it was so different because it was just the two nurses and my husband there in the in the labor room and we just had to deal between the four of us we just had to deal 
and the the one advantage is they will give you like whatever is available for pain relief it's very different from home in that sense where at home i remember with my son the only thing i got was pethidine but yeah initially earlier on in the day i got pethidine and then the, the usual pain relief the paracetamol and then when i went into labor i got the gas which was so good and then they'll also if you want then give you the i've forgotten what you call that one that they put in your back so with that one i ended up not getting it because by the time the anesthetist came to give it to me I was already seven eight centimeters at that point we just kind of both realized that there's no point we don't have the time so yeah my labor is another story i don't know if you want to hear that one Le comment down below please <laughs> if you want to hear my labor story or the induction in detail yeah then fast forward we had our baby that evening i think i was only in hospital for two days the care was good they were coming to check on you 